Well, last thing before we get out of here, we are recording this on a Valentine's Day. Um, I have I have loved this team since I was ten years old. Um, I have had many individual loves in in my in my Knicks history. I texted you about an hour ago. I'm like, let's each give our top one or two or three, um, like you know, Nick loves over the course of our lives. And I was thinking about this, and I re- it's, I struggled with it because it's like I, w- I was around for Patrick Ewing, so I just do I say Patrick Ewing number one? But that's that seemed disingenuous. So I feel like it has to be more like someone that just hit you in that weird way that you can't really fully explain, um, you know, and a few names came to mind, but I, I want to turn to you first. Do you, is there one or two names that you want to, you want to shout out as like, you know, your, your Nick Valentine's day shout outs. Sure. Um, I'm trying to think who to start with. Um, I'll start with uh, from the last really good team. One of the only really good teams I've ever seen in Nick's history. Um, I'm going to give a, a happy Valentine's day to um, the goat Pablo Prigioni. Um, Just that type of player who's able to make the subtle plays really get under uh, his opponent's skin on the defensive end. He's just, he was so, um, I'm trying to think what the, what the perfect word to describe him. He was a pest. There's like a, there's a, there's a, I was say, he, there was a peskiness to him yeah. that was just so admirable. And to come to the league at what, 36, 37 years old and still make that kind of impact and be in so many ways the glue to a very good team uh, that should have gone further, but we won't talk about that. You, um, that. you know, I, it's a shame that he wasn't able to continue here. Uh, that you know, I mean, of course, rebuilds happen, and and he was dealt. But I I wish him all the best in Minnesota because I that team is just absolute garbage. And um, <laughs> so I, me, it is. But I, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be. They just they need a new coach, uh, and that's a start. And maybe a new front office, and then maybe clean house, and then maybe rebuild. It doesn't matter. Um, but yes, I, I'm gonna say Paolo Prigioni is the the number one player, Nick, in my heart in recent years. I'll give, oh, as my daughter peeks her head out. I'm going to give two shout outs for that team, two Valentine's Day shout outs. One is, have you ever had a, uh, actually, I, I, I shouldn't ask you to air your dirty laundry on this podcast. Uh, I was going to say, have you ever had a relationship where it was really, it was a dysfunctional relationship all the way through, but you still have fond memories of it? Do you have any of those? Um, No. Wow. Okay. There was one that it just, No. Okay, I have I have one that was both dysfunctional, but I'm like I remember it fondly. Um, so happy Valentine's Day! Shout out to Jr. Smith. Um, and then uh, there are the relationships that, like, you know, they were. It's like a movie where there's never any real. There's nothing like you. Nothing ever really bad happens. Nothing's ever really at stake. Um, it's mostly just like a feel good story. Um, which like the 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 emotional gravity isn't there, but you still enjoy it because it's a good time. And uh, for for that um, analogy, I'm gonna go Happy Valentine's Day to Steve Novak. Um, and just just two more for me. I gotta give one to Jeremy Lin. Uh, ten year anniversary, right? Yep. Um, crazy, it's been ten years. My goodness. Um, especially it, Valentine's Day, right? The 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 uh, the the shot against Toronto. God, crazy that that was 10 years ago. Um, so happy Valentine's Day to Jeremy Lin. And then last but not least is a guy that I don't even know if you know who this is. Do you know who Anthony Bonner is? It's okay no, if you don't. I don't think There's I no don't. reason you should. He averaged five points a game, if that, on the on he was on the Knicks for two years um, in the mid-90s. But for whatever reason, 10, 11-year-old me, when I watched those mid-90s Knicks teams – he came in and he's like, I'm trying to think of a, a comparison. He was like a much less talented version of Anthony Mason. If I, if that, that's probably the best comparison. And um, I could look up his stats right now, but it's not even worth it because he was just, he was a, t- he was not a good player, but he, he just came in and he always seemed to try really hard. And like, whenever I think back to those mid nineties teams, Anthony Bonner is the guy that like comes to mind. Is like, man, I really love me some Anthony Bonner. 
So uh, happy Valentine's Day, Anthony Bonner. Any any other Valentine's Day Nick shout outs for you? Yeah, I'll, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll give two more. Um, okay. I'll say the first one is uh, happy Valentine's Day to Mr. Landry Fields. Of course. Um, you know, love. Jeremy Lin doesn't happen if not for Landry Fields' couch. Need that we couch. Have to keep that in, ma- in mind. Um, yeah, just the talk about, you know, a player who came out of nowhere. You, you find a late pick in the second round or mid pick in the second round. Um, had a nice little uh, dalliance with him. Went off and think he was rookie of the month for a month. Um, I have this really fond memory of, God, it must, must have been like, it must have been 2011. It was probably 10 years ago, uh, January 2nd, 2011, where uh, we had the Knicks play the Indiana Pacers. And I went with a friend of mine. How do you remember this date? I just, I'm really good with dates for the most part. Uh, God bless. Long, long-term memory, I'm really good at. Short-term, I'm not as good at. Um, you know, but I just remember Landry having a really fun game and my friend and I uh, were, were waiting outside to see the fans and Landry Fields comes out of the car with his girl and we, like, we just chased, we ran with the car and Landry Fields just <laughs> laughing hysterically uh, and saying what's up to us. And, uh, you know, it's just like, those kind of moments where as a young fan, it's just like you like seeing players care about you. And uh, it, was, it was just really, it was really nice to see. It was, it was like a very short um, ephemeral moment in time for both That's of great. us. Cause his career went downhill, unfortunately. And unfortunately, then, you know, you grow up and you become less uh, enamored with and infatuated with, with players and you just, you get more mature about it. And I'd say the, the, the last one I'll say is of course, uh, um, Mon petit prince. I was about to say we have we have to both we have to listen again. He's obviously a very controversial player for a lot of fans, and I just I guess it's a sort of thing where when you look at what you want him to be, just literally a a a Swiss Army knife off of the bench who can give you fifteen minutes of action, can defend some of the opponent's best players, and do it at a good job. And as we're hoping to see when he's able to come back from this knee injury. Uh, is just like knocking down the threes that he was hitting very early in the game. So, or very early in the season, excuse me. So, uh, you know, again, like you, you want to see the players that you have drafted thrive because it shows that there's a process involved. And for a dude who has lasted this long, you know, no matter what happens to him at the trade deadline or in free agency or whatever, he's lasted this long. Uh, he's, he's outlasted you know, so many executives and coaches that yeah. it's, it's just remarkable to be able to do that. I don't know what secrets he has, but they must be plentiful uh, that, or he's just so goddamn beautiful that they don't want to trade him because who wants to be the guy who traded away Frank Nielakina. So um, I hope he gets better. Couldn't be me. No, definitely not me. Uh, again, like when you look at the photos that the Knicks have, have posted of him, the knee brace looks big. And I think a lot of people have thought he's out of the rotation because he's a situational player. Uh, he might be, but it's also, you also have to consider the fact that it might just still be injury and he's having to come back from that. And so, you know, very curious to see how the front office addresses him, what his interest in the league is, if they're just willing to trade him for even a, a late second round pick, or if they'd rather just hold on to him at that point and sign him to a cheap contract. I don't know, but he's still on this team right now and I love him and uh, I hope he stays and uh, happy Valentine's Day, Frank. Happy Valentine's Day, Frank. You have represented um, a flickering candle amidst the darkness over the last several years in our hearts. Um, So we thank you for that. Even if it doesn't happen here, um, we will always have. We'll always have Paris. (laughs) Honestly, as you said, flickering candle, it kind of came to mind where it's like, where we talked about candles, what, maybe a podcast or two podcasts ago, Frank is, I think his new nickname should be the menorah because oh, wow. like the Maccabees, he's just last, that oil's going, baby. It's, it's going nonstop. It does not burn out. I, I mean, I've, do you, you've once again left me. He's speechless. the menorah. That's he's okay. The, the menorah. Uh, yet another nickname, nickname for Frank.